Hello science learners and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Miss Martins and in today's video we're going to be going over the term one topics for physical sciences for this year. If you're new to my channel and you have not subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe because all of the topics that I go over, that I briefly go over in this video and let you know that they'll be coming up in term one, I'll be doing videos on those, I'll be doing past paper exam videos, I'll be doing study tip videos, I also always link useful documents in the description below, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and the document that I'm showing in this video I have created for you guys for free. You can access the document on my website missmartins.co.za, again I will link that in the bio below, so let's go, let's jump right into the video. First important thing to take note of is the order of the topics that I include in this video and in my free document, that order is determined by the ATPs or the annual teaching plans. And these are basically guidelines that are sent from the department to schools. So most schools follow this guideline, but your school may not follow this guideline. And what that means is that your teacher may teach the topics in a slightly different order. So you're going to have to just double check and confirm the order of topics with your teacher. Now, as I mentioned, this document that you see on the screen behind me is a free document that I created for you. You can access it via my website, missmartins.co.za. And if I scroll down in this document, you can see that I set it up basically like a checklist. So what I did is I created a sort of format where I list the subtopics for each big topic. I list formulas and things to know if there are any that are applicable and then I've given a little tick column. So basically you can use this document when you learn in class to see if you've covered everything and when you study to see if you've gone through everything for your exam. So again, this document can be found on my website, but let's go through the topics for term one. Now remember your school can switch up the order, but according to the ATPs, you'll be doing the following topics in term one for physical sciences. And that is vectors, which is physics, forces and free body diagrams, Newton's laws, and then electrostatics. Now the first three topics that I listed in the document all overlap. They are essentially part of one big section called mechanics. So you need to learn vectors, which you did a little bit of in grade 10. In order to do forces and in order to do Newton's laws, you need to do forces. So they build on one another. So some schools may consider this as one big topic. Your teacher may not even distinguish between them as three different topics because they are connected and because they flow into one another. But one thing to highlight is that if you follow the ATPs, if your school follows the ATPs, you can see that term one is entirely physics. There's no chemistry, which is interesting. I know some people prefer the one section or the other, but let's jump into a summary or the summary or the breakdown of the topics. Now, just remember that I compiled these from the official ATP documents. You can access the full document in the link below as well. Let's look at the first topic. So our first topic is called vectors. Now, this is something that you did in grade 10 already. You need to be able to define a vector and a resultant vector. The calculations for vectors get a little bit more complicated in grade 11. So you need to be able to determine the resultants of vectors in one dimension. I have videos on this on my channel. But then you also need to determine the resultants of vectors in two dimensions. There you use Pythagoras. And in order to determine the direction, you need to get an angle, you use trigonometry, you use tan theta. We can give you several vectors and ask you to determine the resultant vector. So this does get a little bit more complicated. What you also need to be able to do is to be able to resolve vectors or break down vectors into their components. And you can see that that is the last little column over here. So resolving a vector into its horizontal and its vertical components by using trigonometry. So you're going to use sine or you're going to use cos. And then ultimately using the vertical and horizontal components to work out a resultant. You also need to understand closed vector diagrams and objects in equilibrium. So when it comes to vectors, how can you as a grade 11 prepare for this topic? Well, first of all, go over grade 10 vectors. It's very important to reinforce the basics. So go over what a vector is, how to tell the difference between scalars and vectors, how to calculate basic resultant vectors, go over 
um, the vector addition calculation. So how do you get a resultant or a net vector using a calculation? Go over your head to tail diagrams and you can watch a few of my videos about the grade 11 vectors and how to go about that. But I will be posting a lot more videos this year. So subscribe if you haven't already. Let's move on to the second topic. Now, as I said, all these topics fit into one another and build upon one another. So essentially, this is still part of vectors. Forces are vectors. So forces and free body diagrams, I've just created it as a separate topic, but it flows. So you need to understand the different types of forces that can act on an object. I've listed a few here. The normal force, frictional force, weight. You may have heard of some of these in grade 9 and grade 10, but we're going to go into these in a lot more detail. You're also going to be able to calculate friction. So you can see over here, I have formulas for friction. Don't worry too much about it now. You will learn how to do this. You need to know what affects friction. You need to also, very important, be able to resolve or break down forces into components. So one way that you can practice this or you can recap before getting to this section is practice some trigonometry. So do you know your trig ratios? Cos, sine, tan, can you do those things? Maybe in your school, your teacher already showed you a little bit about grade 11 vectors. Go over that work. I know I have done that with my classes, for example. Then you need to know how to draw force and free body diagrams. I do have a video on this on my channel as well. It's called Newton's Laws. It's um, If you type in Newton's Laws, you'll see it. It's got to do with Newton's Laws. But again, I focus on free body diagrams in that video as well because it's all connected. Then with that being said, we move on to Newton's Laws, which is kind of like we build up to Newton's Laws. So you need to know vectors. You need to know forces. You need to know free body diagrams. You need to know how to resolve forces into components and then we tackle Newton's laws. So we technically have four different Newton's laws that you need to know. Newton's first law, second law, third law, and then we've got Newton's law of universal gravitation. Okay, so Newton's first law and second law, those are the laws that are going to involve a lot of calculations as well as Newton's law of universal gravitation, but that's separate. We have separate formulae to deal with that. Let me show you quickly. So you can see here, this is the formula sheet or the data sheet for forces and Newton's laws. Again, this is free document for everybody. Click the link in my bio to get it by my website. So these are all normal Newton's laws forces. And then over here, you can see right here, the bottom two, F equals G M one M two over D squared and baby G equals big G M of R squared. Those two are Newton's law of universal gravitation formulae. So we've got Newton's law of universal gravitation, those ones over here. And then these other ones are involved with calculating Newton's first law. We've got friction calculations. We've got weight calculations or um, gravitational force. So with that being said, Newton's first law, second law, third law, and Newton's law of universal gravitation. You need to know how to define those laws. So those are definitions that you have to learn off by heart. Then Newton's first law and second law, you will learn how to distinguish between whether it's a first law calculation or a second law calculation. Once you get to reading the question, it's not bad. You will be able to distinguish or tell the difference between those two. And you need to apply the F net equals MA formula differently, depending on if it's a first law or if it's a second law. But for all these sections, first law and second law, you need to be able to draw your free body diagrams. They're going to help you so much with the calculations. You also need to be able to apply Newton's second law and first law for several objects. So it can be one object on a flat surface. It can be one object on a slope. It can be an two objects on a flat surface, two objects on a slope, one object on a table and the other one dangling over the table on a pulley, lots of different options. If you want an idea of how this looks, you can Google grade 11 physical sciences papers. You will see the second question is usually Newton's laws. So question one is multiple choice. Question two for physics papers, generally Newton's laws. So you can see the different scenarios. Don't let this freak you out. The, these questions are easy to tackle once you know the basics, okay? And I will go through these with you. And with that being said, I'm currently working on a Newton's Law study guide. By the time you're watching this video, if it's not when it is actually being published, the guide might be out already. So just click the link in my, uh, in my, webs uh, in my bio to my website. So you can either sign up for the guide 
if you are interested in purchasing it in the future or you can um, purchase the guide if it's already out. So yeah, depends on when you see this video. But Newton's laws is a very important topic because you learn about it in grade 11 and you are tested on it in grade 11 and grade 12. And we do not have time to reteach it in grade 12. So it's very, very, very important. And I am planning on doing a lot more YouTube videos on it. Okay, we spoke about Newton's law of universal gravitation. Here's your data sheet. And then we've got electrostatics right at the end of the term. Now, what makes electrostatics nice is that it builds nicely on grade 10 electrostatics. So you can see here for subtopics, I included revised electrostatics from grade 10, including the conservation of charge. So that's this first formula over here and quantization of charge, which is the second formula over here. Now, what your ATPs don't tell you is that you learned these things in grade 10. And your teacher may not recap it in grade 11 or grade 12, but they, te they test it in grade 11 and grade 12. So you need to know that. Then you learn something new called Coulomb's Law. And if you are very sharp and you've been paying attention, you might have noticed, and some of my students notice this when I teach this and I get so excited, but you may have noticed that Coulomb's Law, the formula, so that's this formula over here. So take a look at it quickly. F equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. That formula looks very similar to the Newton's law of universal gravitation formula, this one over here. And if you notice that, you are right. It does. Very similar. I will go over the similarities in a video, but that's interesting to know. You need to know electric field, electric field at a point. You need to draw electric field patterns. These are easy marks. You cannot mess up on these in the exam. Draw them neatly. And then you're going to use these two formulae over here, depending on what the question is asking for, either to calculate the electric field at a point due to various point charges, then you use the bottom one, or you can use the top one to calculate the force exerted or experienced by a particle when it is placed within an electric field. This sounds super complicated. Again, I promise you, if you stick with me, if you follow your teacher in class, it won't be complicated. Here's a data sheet for electrostatics. And as you can see, I've included the grade 10 formulas here as well. Now, last thing, please, please, please subscribe. If you are not subscribed yet, I really hope to help a lot more of you this year. And remember to visit my website for this free document. I wish you the best of luck with grade 11. I know that the grade 11s of 2024, you guys were grade 10s of 2023 and I managed to reach a lot of you via this channel in 2023. I got some awesome feedback from you guys. You guys are so awesome in the comments. You're so kind and loving and you say such awesome things to me and it inspires me to carry on teaching on this channel. Obviously, I am a teacher. I teach full time. So it is difficult to always put out videos, but I am doing it for you guys and you inspire me. So good luck with grade 11. You've got this and I'll be with you every step of the way. See you in the next video.